Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Gnostic Media's Unspun episode number 102, if you can believe it. And uh, Hans is back with us tonight. We've got uh, more depth to cover. We're just going to have sort of a casual conversation tonight. Um, wanted to give thanks to a couple of people for sending things. First off to Tamara for sending the soap and beef jerky. I've already uh, hammered one of these packages here, but uh, thanks for that. Thanks also to Tony for sending the... Uh, H.G. Wells' book, The Outline of History, and of course, Wells is one of the people that uh, we've constantly exposed, who is a friend of the Huxley family, friend of Thomas Huxley, and tutor to Aldous Huxley, the famous psychopath. Also wanted to mention here a donation that uh, seven-year-old Kane sent to show all of you up, and uh, thanks, Kane, for sending this. I haven't even opened it yet. So I wanted to do that here and see what Kane has to say for his uh, uh, homework assignment. He says, Sorry, my donation is so late. I couldn't figure out what to write you. Do you have any ideas? Well, Kane, that was a great idea. And you posed a question, so good job on that. And uh, thank you for your donation there. And uh, let's see. What did he send? He sent a nice $10 bill. Thank you, Kane. And uh, so, again, showing everybody up. Also, thanks to everybody who sent the uh, donations last week and this week supporting the show. Uh, Hans has a Gnostic Media exclusive CD that he's putting together, put together for those who contact him. And what's that at Hans? Hans Utter at Hotmail.com? Yeah, that's right, Jan. And, yeah. Uh, and I, you know, ideally I had a wonderful timeline that I would have it done, but I'm, I'm, it's in progress. It will be done and that will, it will be sent. So I, you know, I, I appreciate, uh, truly appreciate um, the support. Uh, I did also have some people uh, support me. I'd like to give a shout out to Matthew, Edvard, Robert, and whoop uh, I don't, if you ever, I mean, that's your name. That's, that's great. But uh, yeah, and uh, so I really appreciate, um, and Brandon as well. Uh, and so I appreciate um, the the interest and just, I mean, that's how we can keep this going. And this is how it's different from, you know, you don't have a corporate, uh, you know, a corporate entity that's prescribing advertisements and things like that. So this is how actually we can transform the frame of our consciousness by creating our own media because you know <clears throat> let me let me just interject there on top of that hans one of the latest scandals that youtube is doing is they are now marking my shows as unfit for certain or some audiences before they've been released so i have to request now a review of each one of them that's how they're trying to keep me from getting uh funding and meanwhile they have almost no videos in my whole show's history that they have successfully uh, argued against you know and uh, you know this is how they're they're trying to keep us out so yeah i mean you know donations are essential and you know it's just, you know, thanks so much for sending to hans and to to me yeah because really we're kind of at a final stage in terms of you know, what was envisioned as a possible occurrence is right now in our faces. And a big part of that is control of information, right? So we have our own information networks. I mean, I'm kind of old school in terms of, you know, I was there 12 years old, you know, hacking. I actually hacked into DARPA when I was 12. So I was in the computers and doing that stuff. And I had my modem, you know, dial up bbs that kind of thing and that's how it kind of started and as now it's become the media right the main thing is that the reason of the pushback is that the mainstream media is now being supplanted and media means medium right it's a medium of perception so really media means 
how are you seeing your world? Because how are well, you? That's, our- uh, that's exactly what was McLuhan was arguing, right? Me, the medium is the message. <laughs> well, I, I don't see. I think that's not correct. I think the medium is not necessarily the message. So the medium, what he's saying is that the medium, right? So if I have a recorded CD, right? So that's an auditory medium. That would mean that's what that would mean, right? So that medium is the message that sound is reproducible segments played by a laser now yeah the what actually the idea though of course is that what he's saying um if you look at uh benedict anderson imagine communities and other things talking about newspapers right so the first time we really have a globalized interconnected media was through the newspapers and with the newspaper when you read that newspaper you become part of everyone else that's reading that newspaper, so to speak, right? As well as you're participating in that event or gaining knowledge of that event. So he coined the term imagine communities, but it's a community. Imagine doesn't mean that it doesn't exist, but it exists on, you know, you're not meeting with all these people. Mental construct, yeah. Well, you're in a shared space, right? Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shared community of those who... So speaking of shared communities, I want to mention a a huge, huge, huge discovery this past week. And somebody else had mentioned it to me briefly. So I know somebody else was on to it last fall. And I had looked at it based on somebody else's work who had read my, my Spies and Academic Clothing article. And they had figured it out as well, but um, we have massive new discoveries on the Salem witch trials that are going to blow the roof off of some uh, serious scandals that go back over 320 years. And, um, you know, things are not what they've, what we've been told. I don't want to go into it too much yet because it's based on several people's work combined, including mine. So I, you know, I just want to let people know that there's some exciting stuff coming down the pipeline on that. It's going to uh, blow everybody away, and uh, you know, all always with the uh, Kabbalistic inversion tactics. And that's probably another topic we should try to touch on today somehow. But anyway, I, I need to do a whole show or series just on. Kabbalistic inversion. Well, the, yeah, the inversion aspect, but the media thing, I just want to talk about that for a bit because it's so central. I mean, if people have noticed the way Google searches are being changed and transformed. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. (laughs) They they have a new algorithm out against me now that only pulls up like negative stuff about me, dude. You know, it's all, it's so obvious, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've had, experience like okay emails i'm not receiving emails you know like i have a block that i find stuff in my trash folder but this is happening i've I've now i've heard this from other people and people that are much more so to speak out front than i am in terms of doing this but even internet uh you know internet uh issues computer issues remote you know there's so many remote viruses now and then we go to the basic stuff is the manipulation of search results because uh, I'm sure you know this, I think it's 2016, the study that you could actually influence an election by manipulating search results. And you could get with very subtle changes in ranking in placement. You could have the same article with a different headline or a different valence, and they would get people to change their, their voting preference. OK, that shows that the power of this subtle level uh, of layered manipulation. Now, you know, you go to a ne- next level is where it's just blatant censorship. But I, I, you may have found this. You search for certain things. You will find nothing. And I actually had something where I was talking about something and I searched it and it was ch- it was changed on my phone. Literally, okay, I'll, I'll say this, and like I said, I don't want to give people the wrong impression about me, but if you go and Google and put Great American Inventors, search that, 
And I got the opposite result of exactly what I said, which I took a screenshot of. Uh, it was completely changed on my phone. And I'm just throwing this out there. Uh, and I went to a local convenience store. The place I usually go was closed. I went to another store. The first thing I noticed was there was a car parked with, you know, a very attractive female sitting there. Okay, great. I walk in the store. She walks in. And you know, this is like 1.32 a.m. And it's, you know, I'm like, okay, this is odd. And then another car pulls up and there's a, and I walk outside and I just, I just, just out of intuition, I say, hey, you got a lighter? She opens the door. I hear her talking on the phone. There's a male voice. Okay. He's going inside right now. Make sure you watch this and this and this. And he's like, I can't, he's just asked me for a lighter. And then she hung up and then she immediately drove away. And that was on the same night that this Facebook thing, I mean, sorry, the Google search of particular terms were changed. That's it absolutely happened. You know, there's no, I'm not making anything up. There's nothing conspiratorial, but I'm talking about what you have on levels of not only algorithmic manipulation, changing rankings, right? And then you, I mean, the blatant attack is where what's happened to you, right? That's like, that's a sledgehammer. Right. That's a machine gun. But the subtle level, I search for stuff. It just doesn't come up. And I've I've been tracking this and there's certain things that just disappear and notice the ranking changes. And it's all personalized to you. Do the same search on a different computer. It will be different. You know, if you go, you know what I mean? So there's this tracking aspect that goes on to mobile devices and all this other stuff that that and that's. You know, that's kind of what I've been getting towards and trying to articulate. Yeah, as, as somebody who's saying it's gaslighting, which it is, cyberbullying, all that kind of crap. But it's like more subtle when they're doing it now. They're What they're doing now is making it so that uh, anybody who searches your work, for instance, you know, they're going to come up with nonsense about us and lies that they themselves put out. You know, so that uh, people are, are are discouraged from looking at our work or whatever, and it's like they're trying to push this whole, <clears throat> um, how do you say it? Like rewards based society, you know, like in China or whatever. I think you mentioned this the other day. Yeah, well, no. So, so what I'm trying to say, I'm just throwing this out there, um, as you know, in full disclosure is that, okay, this happens on many different levels. Um, and there are various programs. There's massive budgets. Okay. Uh, for local community-based organizations, this and that. Right. And so things can happen. They can bring people into play. We're talking about huge level of, you know, entire data gathering, intelligence stuff, all that, right? So all this is occurring. Now, here's the thing, right? Uh, you know, we talked about the Pokemon Go thing. Like I said, that is the template for our world that will be unfolding. And, and the main thing is that the media, going back to just opening up saying like, right, we can create a media that we can actually communicate, right? We have a voice, and that is so important because this stuff could just disappear overnight, right? It could be gone. You never, you know what I mean? Just like you're just in a black hole. That's why it's so important that I think right now is a very important time for solidifying networks, right? Communication networks. So if stuff just gets totally shut down, it will still, you know, be available. Keep your old bod modems. You know, <laughs> you might have to dial up. Somebody might have to set up a, a local uh, dial up server. So, uh, you know, <laughs> wow. So, what do you think is the direction they're going to? Uh, what, what do you see things 10 years out if we don't uh, stop this stuff, if more people don't stand up and help? Well, the basic setup is found in fiction, right? In quote-unquote dystopian novels. Um, and 
you know, personally, like I was going to read some from this exegesis of Philip K. Dick. Very interesting guy, right? There are people that can get, I think, get intuitions. They can basically, in a certain way, you could say they extrapolate from what they're experiencing and they they push it out. Pattern That's, recognition, et cetera, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, or else, you know, it's maybe it could be a visionary experience where you see what's unfolding. However that, however you want to, you know, delineate how that's manifested. So right now, you know, we have a lot of things that were, would be, would have been unthinkable. Let's talk about Google. Okay. About the Twitter revelations, right. You know about that. This is uh, this guy, Veritas, James O'Keefe, who's, he, who uh, did an initial video basically with uh, you know whistleblower from Twitter saying, okay, we, we censor certain posts and we, we manipulate stuff. And then Twitter responded, oh, this is one person, a disgruntled employee. And then they came out with a whole architecture of basically, you know, gaslighting, censoring, manipulating in, information flows, right? You have the testimony to Congress with Google, Twitter, and Facebook. This happened a couple of weeks ago, saying straight up, we are part of this plan or project to eliminate, uh, I forget how they phrased it. like Dissent you know, or? No, homeland threats, you know, or cognitive dissonant paradigms. You, you know, anyone can look it up. So that just happened and we can trace it back, back and back. But now it's come to the point where it is the point when they're blocking your channel, right? Cause we're not, you know, come on, we're not like 10, 150 million views for, you know, the cute dog, you know, you know, my dog, you know, uh, whatever, whatever it could be right. My, I, my dog, you know, dances like James Brown. <laughs> That's it. Hey, I'm going to write that down, man. That's oh. a good one. But so, so anyways, we can get off that topic. But yeah, how, how I see it. Well, I mean, I see that a this information will be cut off, right? These channels will be cut off. And then it's just go, from there, you know, will escalate. Well, yeah, you know, I mean, it's like, you know, people need to download, you know, all these shows like yours and mine and make sure that you know, when they take this stuff off, it's still out there and available and able to circulate around. You know, buy the archives from my website, too, and I'll mail it to you. Help support the show, too. Yeah. yeah. You know, what happens when they shut, you know, shows like us off where we're actually showing how they're doing it, where we're, you know, one of the only shows out there that didn't sell out? Yeah. And this, okay, Jan, you know, I remember... Uh... Your work, emperor wears no clothes, right? So you're well, Jack's at, work, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, that was way back in the day, yeah. But but see, I mean, I got the how'd I get that book? You know, I just found it, you know, in my bedroom. You know, this is back in the day, right? There's no, you know, you go to your local head shop or you meet with people and you just get these books and you read them, and but they just kind of show up, but they're still being published and distributed. But that was totally different network right yeah and and, and so but that's the kind of that's <laughs> I, I, I know because i was like working with the hemp movement at the hemp office in la during all of that back in the day you know and we were shipping the books out and all that stuff you know <laughs> yeah well the metaphor i'd like to use is gps right gps when I, I first started using gps i totally got into gps and i would like use the gps to go to places I knew how to go to, but I'm like, oh, I got my GPS. So I'll put in this address, that address. And what actually happened is I realized my directional stents started to atrophy, right? Things that I could do just navigating, even on a different city, I'll know east, you know, the directional, the quadrants of the compass, and sort of I know I'm going northeast or northwest. Like I had you know, I, I realized finally, like, I couldn't go to a place that I've driven to like 50 times, you know, nearby because my GPS conked out. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, so, but it, it, that was, that was a great little lesson, right? The, you know, 
So this localized network distribution, right, as, as Yanji said, download the stuff, save it, and let's, you know, let's create our networks that, you know, so this stays alive because, I mean, we have the technology, right? But if you can't connect to it, if it's not, you know, because the Google search is the first thing where this stuff starts to become invisible. Yeah, well, you know, and, and for those who don't know, Google is owned by InQtel, which is CIA, as is Facebook. You know, they're they're both the same company, and then they're, you know, controlling the search results. You know, they they're the one that they're the ones that pump out all of this, you know, uh, extreme liberal transhumanism transgender stuff that's all you know cia oriented stuff that they're pumping out the you know the psychedelic revolution all of that stuff that's their darling the feminism the migtow all of that stuff and and you realize this and it's like you know it's no wonder why they're trying to shut us up and keep this show you know limited you know, the last thing they want is, you know, a million people, 10, 20 million people catching the show one day. You know, it, it always cracks me up, too. And I, I've seen them fudge the numbers. And back years ago, it used to be worse. Like one time I watched them roll back, like the hits on the video one day, instantly like 20,000 views and change the uh, thumb up and thumb down numbers like in an instant, you know, it's ridiculous. But you know, they. You know, if uh, if one of the if one of these videos went viral, you know, and there's what fifty three, fifty four thousand subscribers on my channel, and like none of the videos ever get more than like six or ten thousand views, right? And it's like I'll see people that have like a tenth that, and they'll lo upload one of my videos, and it'll get sixty, seventy thousand views in a week. You know, so yeah, they're definitely messing with the numbers. And I think they're definitely hiding what you know what the ch you know the channel views really are, and uh, all of that. So then they can you know fudge what they're you know the money that they pay for the advertisements you know, and they're constantly screwing with that so that I I can't get funding for the show, you know. So that's like I you know I got to ask we have to ask the audience for for support. Because the other means that we use to try to support the show to keep going and keep putting the information out, they're constantly messing with. It's like, you know, it's like you're dealing with a two year old, you know, or a three year old, and just they can't be honest about anything. It's like they can't play fair, they can't do anything forthright and honest. It's all of this constant, you know, buggery. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, that's what I've been harping on is really it's, it's now on the plane of consciousness. This is where it's happening. And that's why music in a certain, is so important as are our means of expansion of our consciousness and remain keeping that free. And, you know, the body can be enslaved our body, you know, we can be killed, you know, they can drop a bomb on my house and that's, the, that's the brute force level right but what we're talking about is not a localized phenomenon this is why okay you know uh in russia you know you've got there you have okay russia is a fast country but in russia you have rush the that is everyone should study what happened in 1917 on that is the template the model but because it's on a global scale it has to be done in a valence manner. What I mean by that is tiptoe totalitarianism. It's no, it's it's not tiptoe. That's what I'm trying to stress. It's it's beyond tiptoe. It is that there is there are certain people that are just crushed and they're jailed and whatever or assassinated. And there's a few. It's like you look at it as a curve. You got a flat line. You got a few. I mean, I could go up or down. Let's say there's a few people, <laughs> but. The whole it the uh, the whole thing that's being right now. I'd say in the last. I'd say this started. Uh, I understood this around 2016, and when I started, I, I didn't talk about it. I wanted to, and I, I, you know, I started to see it's happening, happening, ramped up, and now at least okay. And again, the caveat being that I'm not. You know, I'm not telling, I'm not a prognosticator. I'm not the, you know, vision of the future, but I'm telling you that I saw this 
when certain laws were passed and certain things happened, I said, this is going to this point. So what it is, it's, it's gone up this peak. We've actually hit a peak level, but only a few people now. So Jan, like for example, your channel, like, okay, views, right? Look at a YouTube video, you know, 300, 200 views where you think this person has no credibility. That's what you think in a certain way, right? Unless it's like you're searching for that information, you know, it, 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 part of it, right? Keeping the views down is is a way of saying for some, I mean, some people will see, okay, oh, you know, Peterson, who's he's got some interesting things to say. Um, I think he also has a certain level of either reticence or disinformation. Jordan Peterson out of Canada, right? I'm talking <clears> about, but I've seen a couple of his shows. The the fact that he instantly became uh, the alternatives megastar is always a, a red flag for me. I mean, although I have the shows that I have seen, he has definitely provided some good information, and he's definitely calling for the return of the alpha male and talking about logos, et cetera, which are all important issues for people to grasp and understand. But you always have to wonder when somebody gets that big, you know, they don't, they don't allow in from my experience, from your experience, you know, I mean, we've made some of the biggest discoveries out there and they're not parading our work around, you know, you don't see me on the cover of the New York times or LA times, you know, for discovering, uh, the, you know, that the CIA created the counterculture and Larry and McKenna and all these guys were CIA. You don't see any of that. You don't see them, exp you know, making public my spies and academic clothing article or, or any of the rest of it. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing. I, you know, and I want to stress it's not sour grapes. It's not like, Oh, this person did this or that because, you know, I, for me, it's basically, it's primarily just communication, but unfortunately due to this communication I've had, you know, it could be serendipitous, but I had like four times I nearly got killed. Each one of them was different and they're back to back and they're all weird and they were all fishy. And I had issues, you know, where I go to authorities and they're like, Oh, you know, and there was all kinds of weird stuff that happened around that. I can go to specifics. I'm happy to do that, but I'll just say that, you know, you know, the, the elevation and you notice the hits and then you notice, okay, go fund me page, all this money. Okay. No, that's great. Right. Good, you know, good for them. On the other hand, there are these things that, you know, I'm talking about these peaks, right? So, you look at when I said the inverse peak, the negative thing is someone going thrown in jail. Then you have the other side of that reaction, which is someone gets pumped up. That's sort of reflecting that person's position. They're suddenly, you know, well known. And usually you have what's called sheep dipping. I'm sure, everyone knows that is where somebody, oh, okay, well, I, you know, uh, this person, you know, they got fired and now they're they're coming out or whatever, you know. So that also, if it can be a bit fishy, right? So, but we don't want to go into a space of paranoia because there also are people, you know, like I said, there's certain stuff, Jan, that I don't talk about on the air just because that just, you know, I'm not going to make a public statement, but I know what's going on, right? On the other hand, there are a lot of people. How about Richard Spencer? Another, you know, he's an interesting guy. He's suddenly the leader. He's got an entire interesting pedigree. And there's two people that one guy, um, uh, Jonathan Bowden, who is a wonderful intellectual, great speaker, came to visit Richard Spencer. I heard an interview and he was he sounded extremely articulate. And I, I didn't I could not believe it was him talking because I'd never heard him speak in that, you know, intellectual manner. But this guy who went back to England, oh, dies of a heart attack. He's like 48, just drops dead. Uh, OK, fine. And that's that's and that's a connecting to him, but he's got all kinds of interesting and weird connections that and then you have people, but you also notice that okay, they have a developed people just pop out as leaders, right? Um and this the danger is that you know you take away not only the energy of the movement or the the truth, but also when you know, you also set someone up to fall. 
here with the feet of clay, Alex Jones, you know, my hero, man, Alex Jones, man. I've, I mean, I had my whole bedroom wall, Alex Jones pictures. I bought every supplement he ever made. And then I, I grew man boobs. I said, I'm not going to take him. Anymore. <laughs> It was it was estrogen, not testosterone. No, okay, that was a joke. Uh, I was I said that facetiously. I, I I never had you know I never bought any of his stuff. I you know, but I'm saying that that's like you know that's the thing is that this person is set up, and then you doubt even those people who are speaking the truth. So even if everything is said was true, <clears throat> if that person turns out to be an agent or false or whatever then that's going to color that information, right? right? So we have we have process of information transfer, but I think also there's a very, there's a great importance for leadership in terms of, you know, you know, like back in the day, right? You know, you could, you could print stuff off. You could make Xerox copy magazines, have it distributed. Now, can people even do that? You know, going back to what I said, GPS, can we, you know, Every, everybody goes on the CIA's Facebook and then shares the information on their own systems, you know? <laughs> yeah. But, but how about trying to put it out locally? Can people still do that? I mean, I can't. I mean, I, I, no, I, I'd like to. You know what I mean? What I'm talking about is, that, is networks. Oh, yeah. I used to. Yeah. You know, when I was in my early 20s, I ran the uh, California Hemp Initiative out here before they overturned or flipped that whole thing into a mess. But you know, and, and, uh, it's like, you know, that's what we were doing. We were, you know, making copies of flyers and handing them out and telling people where, you know, hemp rallies and stuff would be. And, and, you know, I mean, it was like on the ground work, you know, you had to go to like <laughs> the parks and recreation department and get a permit for free speech and all of this stuff, you know, <laughs> But that's, dude, I mean, I'm telling you that that's like the, you know, that's like the forgotten wisdom, right? Oh, I yeah. Mean, well, yeah, I remember it well because <laughs> I lived it, you know, I did it. But you can pass around flash drives, right? You can get those cheap flash drives. Right. You know, that's a great, you know, I mean, so we can do that. So you can actually give a library of information to people on a flash drive. So I, I you know, not to be too apocalyptic, but I think that's important just to have that. Buy the Gnostic Media archives on flash drive. Support Gnostic Media. That's the yeah. only mind control message we give you here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Well, well, let me just segue. I, I, I um, since, I, by the way, this is. I know you, sorry, just really quick. Tip your, tip your camera down a little bit. You're kind of. There you go. That's a little better. Maybe a little too yeah. much, but yeah, better. You see in the Alex Jones residue? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How about that? You got to eat some more donuts and bagels to get there. No cream cheese on those, though, you know? <laughs> Anyways. But you know what? What's interesting is that, okay, you have the, the fallacy of guilt by association, right? And that's there. But Alex Jones, for example, I mean, he's got intel connections all the way down. Upside, downside, left, right. You know, we're talking about, you know, direct blood relations that are doing covert operations in Central America, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So that's, um, you know, I guess I won't get invited on his show now. That's okay. Dude, you but, know what? I haven't been invited on his show since I told the truth, you know, and he sat there making fun of my name the whole damn show too. It was terrible, you know? Well, that just shows nope. the lack of, you know, it, it can't, lack of, it's one of, one of the worst, probably one of the two or three worst interviews I've ever done was his show. And that was the trivium, right? You came out on, uh, that was, yeah. A and, yeah. That was like what? 2011, summer of 2011. Yeah. But, uh, you know, and then uh, he, yeah, it was just ridiculous. But the whole thing was a setup, you know. Well, that's like the, that's the mode, right? He goes into like frat guy or like the bully, you know, hey, 
Yeah. You, you oh, know you know I mean? what? And then you know what he did was he even edited our show. He had it edited and re-released a, 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 his own version of it that had some of the stuff chopped out of it. I think I may have saved the original copy of it to prove that, you know? Yeah. And that's anyways, I mean, that's why it's so important. So I just, um, you know, grateful for this channel. So, uh, I had a couple things I just wanted to, uh, talk about. This was, uh, by the way, normally I have a specific topic and all this, this was like, I, I got, I was at my computer. It's, you know, 10 minutes before airtime. So, but I wanted to, you know, just, I got a guitar here. Yep, and and we're gonna let you play. You know, and and I gotta thank you because I was hoping I was gonna get uh, Mike uh, Boriola on tonight from the Eagles to discuss all of that. He's a former quarterback. He's been wanting to come on the show for a while, and that didn't happen. Uh, so uh, hopefully, we'll get him on next week and see how that goes. So uh, hit it, Hans. Yeah. So uh, basically. I'm doing this because I didn't know what I was going to talk about, right? No. But I wanted to say that, you know, so we look at music, right, itself. So I want to stress that it's not that music itself is evil, bad, or whatever, but it's it's associative conditioning, you know, as well as the, um, the intention. I think there's an intentionality. So I want to demonstrate, so I just made this chord progression. Well, made it up. I started playing it. So here we go. It's uh, just. Okay. So that's a chord progression. Now, that chord progression. is a narrative structure you could say right so we've got a movement between different chords um e c g a e c g b which is the fifth the five which resolves to the e so that's that's a physical property right you know no one has to invent that. It's already there. It's extant in the basic sound itself, which is vibration, right? So so I want to demonstrate it. So I just played that. So if I play this unconsciously, or I play the same chord progression with a negative intention, it can communicate that, right? So it has... Um, <clears throat> It has a modulatory effect on consciousness, but it also can communicate feeling and experience. So I'll just do it again. So I'll play very angry. Okay, and as you feel, now I've played in a different mood or modality. Somebody says you're triggering 80s flashbacks. All right. Well, that's exactly what I want to do. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought I made this chord progression up. Now, but so what I'm saying is that just by playing that, right? So I can, I internally will communicate something different. And, but also the, these movements, which are natural properties of sound, right? Of vibration. Um, if they're articulated with awareness and positive intentionality have a totally different effect. So the same thing when it's, you know, turned into a, 
not only a means of control, but a means of mechanization and unconscious activity. So you're looking at some kid, da, 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 da. and this is basic, right? I just... I have to play jazzy stuff. Unconscious, right? Break Unconscious. off into some Brian sets through there. Now, I'll do the same thing with awareness and intentionality, communication. is that we have these weapons right in a sense music uh this guy named Fela Kuti this African musician he said music is the weapon of the future right and he was it and that's true right music is the weapon of the future so this scale right all of our music which is it has you know the blue scale <laughs> But that, that's like 99% of all of our music from 1952 onwards, okay? You know, there are great artists that use that scale to perform, but the fact is that what is linked to that, right? It, what is being done through this and... I, a friend of mine, just a guy that I know, you know, just a normal person, you know, he's not in any of this stuff. And I asked him to listen to classical music and it just, you know, after, you know, he just texted me the other day. He's like, he's like man, when I listen to rock now, it sounds like infants banging on pots. And pots. <laughs> yes, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, man. I actually heard some Beatles the other day. It was, I was just astounded at how awful it is you know yeah well i you know there i would say i think the beatles are i mean compared to a lot of stuff are pretty competent i mean there's so many terrible groups that here's the thing that's weird right i mean cer certain things like some of the disco stuff to be honest i mean they have very good session musicians they're sure. doing the they're doing stuff that's now done by computer, right? Electronic dance music is what was done. And there's probably 15 people. We got like Steve Gadd and some of these. Well, these sure. are like, I mean, like the, the Bee Gees were pretty advanced in their heyday, you know? Well, no, but th their backing band, this is like the Wrecking Crew, right? You had a disco right. Wrecking Crew also. Right, right, right. But but, but what happened and was... for they, those who don't know the Wrecking Crew, that was the basically the studio band that made the music for like 1500 different uh 50s into early 70s uh major bands they were like the backbone of the like the 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 everybody just about they were who really created the music go ahead yeah no that's uh that's absolutely correct i mean uh, and that some of these artists, they always say that, like, well, artists in quotes, these guys, they said they basically sucked, right? They couldn't play anything. And they were propped up, you know, or else they had other, even other people singing for them. Uh, but with the disco era, you have extremely, uh, you know, super tight session musicians. That is what became the backbone of electronic music. Because to replicate that stuff live, right, with the correct time, and because it's very, you, know, you really have to be very solid with your time and all that. You can't, you can't half-ass it, right? So they became computerized music. And the reason hip hop was promoted, well, supposedly, uh, from my friend who was like in the, you know, kind of music scene out there, he said, you know, Fleetwood Mac did the album Tusk, the most expensive album of all time. Then they started promoting hip hop because you got a guy 
ripping off a couple things. You know, music industry has always been very bad about copyrights. And suddenly you've got a record for like, you know, a couple thousand dollars compared to a couple million, you know, and notice there's one thing about minimalism, but notice this is stripping away of all the potentialities. I mean, what could the world look like if, you know, the natural development hadn't been circumvented? And that's, uh, you know, that really. Oh, it would have been amazing. And that's what exactly what they're worried about, you know. I mean, that's what they're trying to control is, you know, the real human potential. And they call this crap that they give us the human potential movement, right? Let me just pull that up. And, uh, you know, it's like the the human potential movement, this fake human potential that they give us, created by Abraham Maslow, and it's all, you know, cybernetics, which is what this show is about. But that's, you know, the core of MK Ultra. You've got Gregory Bateson and uh, the Macy Foundation right there, and SRI and Tavistock, and your, you know, Terrence McKenna, Rianne Eisler. That's all of the, that's right at the heart of the whole... MK Ultra, you know, gangbang group, right? Yeah, well, well, cybernetics is, you know, a cyber, you know, comes from to govern or to control. To govern or to control or to understand, right? To understand, meaning that you understand the mechanisms of a particular closed loop system. So, the development of cybernetics, which is very interesting, it said that related to animal, machine, or man. So it's it's and man is man and animal, you know, in the in, in development of cybernetics are basically synonymous, right? So the idea is that I mean what I'm saying is in the literature, they're used interchangeably. So you can originally originally cybernetics as the study of closed loop control you know closed loop systems which means primarily uh in terms of the easiest way to grasp it is just pavlov right you have a closed loop system you hear the bell you go you go grab the food right that's a closed loop system drool drool and grab the food yeah i mean it, it is far more complex than that in terms of you know how it was developed and designed but what's very interesting is that cybernetics itself is at, you know it, it's actually I, I just finally realized that what i've been talking about with all this history stuff and music these are closed cybernetic loops and and going back what they um uh there's a, a model of co cognition talking about nested oscillators you have nested oscillatory cycles let me break that down so you have an oscillatory cycle, your circulation system, your breath, right? You have, these are cycles. These are you know, all these different processes, right? That are going on, but they all certain, you know, an example is a, you know, a infrasonic tone that will cause you to defecate, right? This is a, you know, a sound weaponry stuff, you know, there's certain, you know, you can create emotions of panic or fear. These are infrasonic means that it's below the threshold of hearing. Um, it's like, say, elephants can communicate over, you know, hundreds of miles using infrasound because it travels very far, but it's totally inaudible. But certain frequency ranges directly operate on the human brain. Okay. So you can play certain frequencies, which, you know, it, you're not going to play it on your stereo, right? You have to have special speaker arrays. It actually takes quite a lot to broadcast an infrasonic uh, sound, but that will directly act upon your entire neural cortex and your brain and suddenly your entire body, because of this frequency, you're suddenly defecating and urinating yourself, right? I mean, that's an example. And there's different, oh, there's all kinds of frequency gradations of this. So that's an example of an oscillatory process. What I mean is you have a certain oscillation, in this case of 50, you know, 32s, you know, hertz per second, whatever cycle. And then that goes into your brain, starts to 
align with that frequency and then all these other systems you know will you know you'll shit your pants you'll go into a panic you can die of a heart attack whatever okay that's an example uh but nested you know of, of nested oscillators right so you have they're all going around they're all vibrating um and so that's what a cybernetic loop is right a cybernetic loop a single oscillation cycle it could be okay you know I'm white and I hate myself because I'm white. And and that's just a little cycle. It just keeps going around and around. It's a loop. And there's little things will feed into that loop. Because of the cybernetic loop, you can feed information in from the outside. That's the point of cybernetics, to govern or to control these loops, right? Dog training a dog, you're creating a cybernetic loop. You may have 50 different loops in a dog, right? A dog can sit, stand go outside, walk time, whatever, right? But there's also the level of, the, of connecting those, right? So that that is, um, uh, you know, cybernetics, uh, you know, sort of in a basic way, but it developed in 1845. I think the guy's name was Worma, right? Um, and it was a way, but it's a multi, it, it's called infradisciplinary subject infra or intra so it can get clue it's not multidisciplinary it connects all this stuff and in fact a lot of people think the macy conferences um were because of cybernetic theory but cybernetic theory you know it was developed you know uh you know in the mid mid 19th century um but it did come to the sort of national consciousness in the fifties. And here's where you have kind of like a little, you have the book, uh, Maxwell Maltz, uh, psycho cybernetics, right? The same time as Norman Vincent Peale is a self-help book, how to create and construct your own psycho cybernetic loop systems for success, prosperity, you know, relationship, whatever you want. Um, so that psycho cybernetics, that book, I think, is, uh, I don't know how, it, I think, as far as I know, it kind of sort of disappeared, but that it came out about the same time as the Macy conferences. But then, as you mentioned, Bates and all these other people are all part of this. And people say, well, how could this be coordinated? How could this be possible? Well, it can't, it, it's possible when you have these types of, uh, infra or intra intradisciplinary which means that you'll it means that you're not you're going to give this problem okay mr media guy miss you take this thing and apply it here okay bioscience guy you do this or the you know what i mean so it means that you can subdivide the deployment of i would say constructing cybernetic loops which is at the basis of lily's work uh, programming and reprogramming the human biocomputer, right? Which is his work with dolphins and LSD um, and going back to psychedelics. Psychedelics. Yeah, and he was doing probably some perverted stuff with the dolphins too as well, but and other weird things. No, come on. <laughs> no, come on. <laughs> no. Are you being sarcastic? No, I'm not. I mean, Lily is... He was having some, dolphins are violent, man. You know, dolphins. I think we talked about this. Dolphins have been known actually to rape females, human females. I mean, dolphins are like very sexually aggressive. I don't know if you knew that. No, I didn't. Yes, yeah, Sea World and stuff. Not John Lilly. I don't know, man. <laughs> but I, the, I've heard some pretty wild things about Lilly about his relationships with dolphins. Maybe he was allowing such things to happen i'm not sure it's 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 hearsay i should point out but i've i've read and studied some some things you know well i do have a a, a personal anecdote direct anecdote is a friend of mine they managed to get john Lilly to come and give their college commencement address and at this point he came in he was in a wheelchair he had a ketamine drip he had a, you know he had a he had an IV of ketamine, and then he talked. I guess he talked about aliens mostly during the address. So that's. I think he died, you know, short, shortly after that. Uh, but 
Yeah, he was. Yeah, I heard. I, you know, from what I understand, he was pretty well a mess at the end of his life. But uh, yeah, he was one of the MK Ultra doctors, and I don't know what uh, what sub project he was involved in. And I'm just showing the brain database up here. But well, know, no, what's interesting, Jan, is that you know, as I, you know, I, in terms of my other life, you know, I'm I'm reading actual scientific literature, like. John Lilly stuff, though, is not really scientific. It seems scientific on the surface, but there's no way that is this a document from a, you know, you have all these, you know, government sponsor, you know, sponsors and all this stuff. This is the shit you're pub- I'm sorry, the stuff you're publishing. Hell no. I'm sorry. I mean, this is what is for the intelligentsia masses to read and think they're reading a scientific study, I would say. In my opinion, on the other hand, the stuff is broken down, right? I mean, some of these programming codes and the development and how how it was, um, you know, I mean, things things slip through the cracks, right? I mean, it's not like, you know, again, it's not a homogenous unicellular entity. You know, this is, I mean, in my opinion, it's based on a philosophical misunderstanding. And then once you understand there is a wrong decision, then you can either choose the light or the dark and the right. light that choose that other side. Yeah. Um, because the misunderstanding, I mean, you can have that misunderstanding and then suddenly you're like, Oh, I've got it all. I've got fame fortune. I'm on Gnostic media. I mean, this is no, but I'm saying, you know what I'm saying is I've got it all. Wait, Oh, I'm not happy. Something's wrong. You know, this how many people are like yeah. that. Yeah. But you know, then there's, then you got, there's different ways you can reach that that point right that no point where you say wait this isn't right but yeah exactly but there so what i'm saying is there's a lot of people when you have an intra or infra spectrum discipline like cybernetics you deploy many many different people doing different things that may not be aware of what they're doing but and the cybernetic loop factor and the macy conferences and yeah so do we have actual documentation we have the minutes we have the uh, i mean macy conference i, I have work. i have the macy conference's minutes in the other room i mean uh who knows how much they've edited out but i do have a copy of it i didn't i didn't put it on the desk for us tonight but uh it is available yes is it is it edited you think or i mean how much detail is in there is there, there actual transcript uh, i would uh, you know i mean we can only guess that it's edited. I mean, they didn't even publish it until like a decade ago, right? Maybe, may have been, you know, and it's published out of Germany too, interestingly, but. Uh, the home of free speech. Yeah, it may have been the 90s it was published. I'd have to check the date on it, but it was, uh, you know, not not so current. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can get the Macy Conference's publication hopefully uh you know <clears throat> hans people donate uh for all of your efforts for coming on and helping us all understand all of this mind control and everything dr hans utter dr Han, uh, hans utter.com is your address please donate to you at at what hans utter at hotmail.com and uh you can yep. send send donations to me at uh contact at gnosticmedia.com or go to the donations page on the website etc um maybe maybe uh mike boriola will be able to come on next week he was a quarterback for the eagles back in the 70s and uh there's a lot that they're covering up and hiding about that it's good to get that on it's one more layer of the Mind control, we need to get on and expose. And he's been wanting to come on for months, so I apologize for dragging that out to him. But, uh, you know, Super Bowl weekend and all, you know, what better time to try and get him on. But hopefully his knee surgery, whatever, goes well. And uh, Hans, thanks for, again, for all your efforts. We'll get you back on soon. And, uh, you know, I've got I've got so much stuff to lay out, too, so much new research as well. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I just riffing. I just want to read some weird quotes here from Philip K. Dick real quick. The sure. Last, sure. Last two and minutes. then we're going to wrap it up because <laughs> we got about a minute left and then I got to yeah, yeah. get going. Okay. Christ was and is the life of the totality expressed in its true form as sentient information, older term, wisdom, or logos. 
His appearance here marks the entry of the anima of the total nuos into this separated off ossified region. Ah, it keeps going. Just another quote. This is from the exegesis. So I was interesting the idea of the logos uh, as as logos uh, knowledge. And I'm going to read another quote here from the exegesis. Um, are you talking about the okay? So I, I, what I want to say is that I think that he was on to something, but I also think that he got, you know, pro possibly misdirected. But um, at the moment of Christ's death, the world melts it in a fabulous way, taking on the life of Christ in a macro form. This is the resurrected Christ, now cosmic. Meanwhile, the person who is renewed lives on past his faded moment of death astral determinism okay kind of interesting right so he's looking at the logos which he also posited at the valis uh which sounds like an ai entity so that's you know it's interesting that i don't you know, know about ai entity but you know it's i see logos as more as uh truth itself but that's a whole other we can do a whole show on that on another day you know <laughs> well that well i just want to say that that, that seems like he's saying truth as the body of logos right right the body of truth right and and he said the sacrificial death actually expands it into the entire macrocosm so everything is the body of truth right so right that, the body of interesting logos. everything yeah. except the choice to deceive <laughs> yep yeah exactly you know. all right hans thanks so much i will uh talk to you soon i'll i'll be in touch with more discoveries soon and uh you know, have a good night. Please support Hans. Please support the show. Anything else, Hans? No, I just, uh, it was fun being on with you and uh, wish you all the best. And uh, let's start making some flyers, right? But... Yeah, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, dude. Good night. Okay. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.